has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's a pain free Friday for all stolen out minutes under my hiding, waxing it up. 100, 200, a bad, eight a bad, eight a bad, apple with a bad, attitude, hand around a bunch of bad, had a bad, tape, bad, a hot, bad, 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 attitude, bad, bad. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Barilla Palace, right across the river through the woods from Morgan. And he's going on a road trip with me tomorrow and asked me if it was all right if she brought a big sack of the abusive OG Indica. I said, that's okay with me, Granny, in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, the Brittany Travis, I got a fashion shake it up. I'm gonna come real fun, throw the party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, what a mess is time to tatter. My brain splattered all over Manhattan, Shadoobie, shake it up. Oh, woo, woo. I think I might have caught something from Keith. Shadoobie, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's kicking? I'm Pharrell with the esteemed Prime Minister. Cam Stewart, all day, every day, six ways till Sunday. Today from Toronto, Ontario, where it's 90 degrees. 98 in New York City. Smells like barf, urine, and garbage outside. It's fantastic. Can we get a birthday roll call? Zeke Elliott, 27. Jesus, he looks 35 to me. Tanner Scott, 28. Quentin Dunbar, 30. Taylor Lewan, 31. Sean Lee, 36. Stephen Jackson, 39. Ryan Vogelsong, 45. Scott Shields, 47. Mike Sweeney, 49. Keyshawn, going to the back nine. The big five. Oh, it is all over but the shouting, brother. Sergey Zuboff, 52. Tim Brown, legend. 56. Sparky Lyle, legend. 78. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Astros sweep the double dip from the Yankees. They own the Yankees. I mean, it's unbelievable. We got it all. The walk-off single to win game one, game two. Uh, Alvarez hit another one. Bregwin hit one. We got it all. All the big hits. Everything for you today. The Yankees finished the season against the Astros, hitting 151 against them, their lowest against any opponent in their entire history. How the F are they going to beat them in the ALCS if they can't even get a hit? Aaron Boone diminishes the Astros dominating them. We've got that nonsense for you. Dodgers overcame the uh, late-blown lead to beat the Giants 9-6. I hit that puppy. It was all about the bullpens melting down. I said it would be a bullpen game for scoring, and I took the Dodgers in the over. We got Mookie Betts, big three-run jack. We got Betts on the show. Dave Roberts is... Optimistic uh, Bueller will be back in September. Bueller, Giants sign uh, Trevor Rosenthal. Remember him, the closer, a one-year, four-and-a-half milli deal. Tigers and A's split a doubleheader. We'll go through that. Rangers dominated Miami 8 nothing. We'll get through that. Plus, Scoop Mesh on the show today doing the lion's share with us. Jacob DeGrom throws a simulated game and felt good afterwards. Baseball having problems with attendance. We're talking about Trevor the Predator again today, Bauer. I don't care what you call him. I call him a predator. And uh, the chick that he's had this nightmare with, he loved her when they were in bed having rough sex. Now she's his worst nightmare. He's suing her. She's suing him. Maybe they should just hook up and do it again. You know what I mean? I mean, like, it'd be like that Deshaun Watson thing. All those chicks said they were sexually assaulted until they got checks for 300 grand. Once they got the checks, it was just fun, wasn't it? Once you get the money, uh, he just meant to rub me. He never meant anything by it. What's your name? I have no name. It's non-disclosed. Welcome all of our radio affiliates to the program today. Sirius XM, Mightier 1090, ESPN Radio in San Diego. It's very sunny there. They have a lot of fires. Sports Map Radio, Sports Byline USA near San Francisco where rents exceed 6000 a month. We've got all of tonight's baseball games. Cam's going to gamble heavily with me. Plus, he'll give us some good CFL tips for the weekend. Every week, Cam gives me CFL games to bet on, and I bet heavily on them, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Thank God for the prime minister. The Wizards could make a push to try to land Kevin Durant. Anybody sick of talking about Kevin Durant yet? 
<laughs> Bob Meyer says he likes the team the way it is. That means they don't want Kevin Durant. We got the basketball schedule for tonight and this weekend. The big three starts this weekend. Speaking of sports, I have no idea what I'm talking about. The big three. I got a big three for you. Uh, Jimbo Fisher says he still has respect for Nick Saban. We'll listen to him today lie to us. Pat Narduzzi says we play darn good football in the ACC. They don't say darn good anything in Pittsburgh. That's like a hillbilly thing. Darn good, isn't it? We'll ask the prime minister about that later. We'll talk about Deion Sanders plus Debo Samuel today, Najee Harris we're talking about, the Raiders already a favorite over the Jags in the Hall of Fame game in Canton. That's awful. Bill Belichick, he won't name any assistant uh, with a title. They're just all people that work for him now. Rams got their rings. Cowboys bringing back funky uni. So are the Jets and Bengals. Browns signed Josh Rosen to a one-year deal to sit in a hot tub with hotties and champagne. He can't quarterback, so he might as well get laid. Steelers going to have a Heinz red zone. How cheap of a like backdoor move was that after all the fans complained that they gave a little sponsorship in the corner to Heinz and kept a ketchup bottle? How pathetic was that? We're talking a little Bo Jackson. We got all the NFL season props today in sports history, plus Riccaro. I mean, it is unbelievable, all these people today. Uh, we got golf, talking bad about people. Barkley, Lee Westwood, Tiger Woods. Get it. It's Coast to Coast plus Elvis today. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The ACC, Josh, has not been one of those conferences to expand. That has been the Big Ten and the SEC. Where do you see the future for the ACC going? It's weird hearing him say that. That's like bragging about being one of the best restaurants, but not making the most money. So you're just taking a shot at the way you run your business and the way you're able to put together TV deals and all these sorts of things. So not really a great thing. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. But Trevor Lawrence did run, uh, I mean, a fair amount in college, right? 18 rushing Absolutely. touchdowns, 1,000 rushing yards in three seasons. Remember, they take the sack yards away, so he actually was a little bit more effective than that. And, and, and you know, to be honest, I mean, it does seem that Urban Meyer was maybe the worst head coach that the NFL has seen in, I don't know, 10 years, right? Didn't, didn't know players' names, belittling assistant coaches. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Harrow inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Super Team Games, STG, announcing a next round of investment, $10 million for STG football, which allows fans to trade NFTs of their favorite players, get players, trade players, and do that with blockchain technology. So it's not only taking advantage of the avid NFL market, but the upside of blockchain, the high tech as well, it's a company that's been around the space for about four and a half years and trying to generate some significant economic benefits over time using the football avidity, the relationship with the NFL, the uncertainty, but the high level of expectations for NFTs and your superstars. I'll trade you a couple of NFT players, a running back for a defensive back. That's the kind of stuff you're going to hear in the near future. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game from Inverness, Scotland. 
Hey, my man. Remember how intense I was when I was in the league? Sure. But now, I'm retired. Got everything on chill mode. Chill mode, Mr. Garnett. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Big ticket hitting big parlays. Whose house is it? Big ticket's Whose house? Whose house is big it? Big ticket's house. Big ticket's house. Woo! It's big ticket's house. It's my house! What? <laughs> Oh, you got to get on the uh, BetMGM app. It's fantastic. Bet $10 on any MLB game and win $200 if either team hits a home run. It's just inevitable that you're going to get your 200 clams. Use the promo code MLBHR2022. That's MLBHR2022 as the bonus code. Bet 10 on any game. Get 200 if either team hits a home run. All right. Uh, we've got the prime minister with us today. Let's dive right in. Uh, the Astros continue to kick the Yankees' teeth in. From game one yesterday afternoon, it was a twin bill, day night. You got the walk-off single on AT&T Sportsnet Southwest. Broken back towards short, backhanded. Throw nowhere. Astros win. Astros win. J.J. Manajevic puts the ball in play, and the Astros walk off the New York Yankees 3-2. And with that win, TK, they take the season series. And Manajevic with the big hit, <laughs> Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to hang out with you and Granny tonight. It sounds like a party. God, I can. I, 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 amazing. Everybody, listen, I'm barbecuing with her steaks. You know yep. she's going to be smoking. You know she's Beautiful. going to be drinking. She said she was bringing a Caesar salad and a bottle of wine. I said, let's go. And then I'm driving four <laughs> hours with her to the beach. And uh, I'm going to spend like the next 15 hours with her rocking hard. Uh, and then the sun's long gone. He's he's watching everything: parties, chicks, condoms, alcohol. <laughs> the dog won't be fed. The dog won't be let out. There'll be piles of cable in the kitchen. Anyway, the uh, game two, seven five Strohs. Alvarez and Bregman both homer. Alvarez hits a two out two run double in the second inning to expand their lead right again on AT and T Sportsnet Southwest. For now, they're going to pitch to Jordan with a base open. Hit a home run his last time up. Jordan hits one to deep left center field. Back goes Hicks. He's near the wall. It's off the wall. That'll be a two RBI double. The big man, a home run and a double just off the IL. Just inject that guy right into my veins. He is <laughs> unbelievable, TK. I don't know what I did to deserve the opportunity to broadcast this guy's games. Wow, uh, they're shooting up in the broadcast booth uh, uh, during uh, Astros games, Prime Minister. Hey, how about, uh, hand me that rubber band. Anyway, uh, the Astros own the Yankees. They hit 151 against them. It's just, it's just flat out embarrassing. It is so unbelievable to live here in New York City and to see them in 1719 and now again in 22, just absolutely suffer at the hands of the Astros. It's all you need to know. They can't beat them. No, they can't beat them. And another thing, I, I didn't like that move either. Alvarez is a hot hitter. You had a base open there. That was costly. Hey, the Yankees didn't get pitching. And I'll tell you one thing, Scotty, being in Toronto too, the Yankees and Blue Jays have one thing in common. Hey, guys, you can't always win by the long ball. And you know come playoff time, you're going to deal with good pitching. You're going to deal with weather changes. It's going to get cold. Though some of those bombs are going to be warning track shots. So I'm telling you, the Yankees, they never move the runner. They don't steal bags. They don't do it old school. And I'll tell you, eventually the well's going to run out. you got to win other games except for the long ball, and they don't play that style, buddy. Well, they have had uh, the best season in a decade stealing mm -hmm. bases this year. Uh, they've done everything right uh, in the first half, getting that record, the best in baseball. Their problem is... 
they don't hit against the Astros. It is unbelievable. Aaron Boone uh, says that we're all crazy and that it doesn't mean anything. Here we go, Booney. Look, it's not, the narrative's not going to change, Dan, until you beat them in the playoffs if, if that day Dan comes. Who? I mean, we beat them four out of six last year, and they didn't hold leads. Where'd that get us? It, I understand it's a big story. I understand the season we're in. It, it, it's not going to matter unless October. So we're going to, if we, if we happen to come back here in October, we're going to show up. We're going to expect to win. We think we're really good. They're really good. Don't overstate this. Yeah, and they beat you every time they play. Uh, the Dodgers overcame a late-blown lead to beat the Giants 9-6. Mookie Betts hits a three-run homer to get the lead back on ESPN. Mookie to left. Peterson running out of room. Three-run home run. Mookie Betts. It's 9-6 Dodgers. What a moment for Mookie. Also, same network. He ends the game with a brilliant catch. Here we go. He had a double and an RBI. Jock Peterson right field. Mookie. Oh, have a night, Mookie Betts. He robs Peterson and ends the game with a sliding catch in right field and all the MVP moves of Mookie. We saw it. Cam, I uh, bet on uh, White and the Dodgers uh, last night. By the way, uh, Carver High hit a massive uh, prop on Alvarez hitting a home run last nice. night. And we hit a bunch of props yesterday on the lion's share. But that home run was definitely one of them. The other one uh, was uh, this Dodger game, uh, getting it in late innings, getting it done. And that's not the point. My question to you is this. They signed... They went out and got the reliever, uh, Rosenthal, the Giants. I think they need him. I, I just don't think they are anywhere near as good as, frankly, obviously the Dodgers or the Padres. They're too deep back. This is not last year. I don't think the Giants are going anywhere. No, I agree with you. And I think they've been overachieving for the last couple of seasons. Rodon's on a one-year deal. It's going to be interesting if he could be moved. I think these guys are going to be sellers. Scotty, I should have listened to you last night. I heard Sherapan in my voice. Take the Dodgers. It's a low price. I was thinking too good to be true taking the Giants last night. That was a stooge pick. Congratulations to you and Marenzi who took the Dodgers. But I will say this, the Giants, I don't think they're a threat at all. And the Dodgers, they're just too damn good. But uh, hey, we'll see. There's a lot of baseball left. You know, I took um, the Tigers in the first game and the A's in the second game of their doubleheader at the Ashtray. Game one, Detroit wins at 7-5. I get the cover. Candelario with a homer makes it 4-1 Detroit in the seventh on Bally Sports Detroit. This one in the air, right center field. Drifting over is Laureano. And then deeper, and it's gone! Sky Bolt leaped, couldn't get it. Jamer Candelario homers to lead off the seventh, his seventh of the year. John Candelaria now hitting home runs at 60 <laughs> yes. years old uh, for the Tigers. Uh, he just, I don't know, maybe he became friends with Miggy at some point. Game two, Oakland 5 0. Murphy gets some uh, runs on the board with a three run homer in the sixth on NBC Sportsnet Bay Area. It's going to be a lot of fun for those hitters. The hanger drilled left center and deep, and that baby is gone. Yeah, so they both stink. As we move on, Rangers dominate the Marlins 8-0 in Miami. Garcia hits a two-run homer to make it 5-0 in the top of the fifth as the broadcaster has no idea what's going on. Valley Sports Southwest. Adolis Garcia stepping in now with Jonah Heim over at first base and two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. And this one is swung on and lifted to deep right field. Garcia is chasing. He's got it. Oh, it's still that gone. Thought he caught that ball. Oh, out of here. Whoa, home run for Adolis Garcia. And Emisel Garcia, he tricked me. <laughs> Son of a gun. I barely sit in this chair. And he's out there tricking me. Adolis Garcia with the two-run home run to the opposite field once again. We've seen it so many times from Garcia. That great power the other way. Your heart 
clock's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The morning after. How realistic is it that Donovan Mitchell plays for the Knicks this upcoming season? Yeah, of course, the New York Post reported everything but the Statue of Liberty, and they basically asked for the Statue of Liberty to be hijacked and sent to Salt Lake City. They wanted Quentin Grimes, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel mm. Quickly, Deuce McBride, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six, six first-round draft picks. The from Sports the Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. The one that stands out to me that I think would be the most intriguing, believe it or not, is Seattle. I think that if that guy ended up playing with Rodriguez and going out there with what he's able to do with a bat, if they had and Ty France on top of it and the pitching that they have now with Robbie Ray, if they got their hands on Juan Soto, they would be a serious problem. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Yes, no on will judge hit 50 home runs. Over under is 49 and a half. He is at 33. So certainly when you see Aaron Judge, who is the leader in the clubhouse right now, 33 home runs, guy in second place there we'll talk about shortly is Kyle Schwarber with 29. But it seems like the expectation here is if the Yankees want to do something special, Aaron Judge is certainly going to be along for the ride and be one of those catalysts. Only on Sports Grid. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. Not only is it uh, lion share time, it's scoop time, baby. Craig Mish from Fantasy Sports Today and, of course, the great show Newswire joins us regularly on Coast to Coast here on Sports Grid TV. Fresh off his first class trip to Lipstick City to Chavez Ravine and the Home Run Derby and All-Star festivities at Dodger Stadium. How was it there, Scoop? Hey, Scott, it was fun. A lot of fun. A little bit of a mix of media and vacation time. And the weather is nice in in L.A. at night. I got to tell you, a lot different than Florida, as you know. And, yeah, being at Dodger Stadium, I thought the events were great. And I thought Home Run Derby was great. All-Star game went right down to the wire. So no complaints for me taking a few days off. Not even Alcantara not starting? Well, obviously, you know that that bothers me. <laughs> a lot of you follow anything that 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 I've said. You know, I, I get I've gotten a lot of pushback on that for sure, Scott, because Kershaw started and he had never started a game All Star game, and all the years that he had pitched to the league, he was deserving of it. And I think the biggest argument, Scott, that people were making toward me is that it's a meaningless game and it's an exhibition game. And so if that is in, indeed the case, Scott, and I, and I want to say, okay, for those people who have told me that, it's a meaningless game, it's just an exhibition, it's not a big deal, let them go out and have fun, 
then Scott, why did they give an MVP in the game to John Carlos Stanton holding up a trophy at the end of that thing? I, so it doesn't mean something, but there's an MVP. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. I just, I, I just know what that meant to, uh, to, to Sandy to pitch in that thing. And um, yeah, it's over. We move on. Yeah, I actually couldn't agree with you more. I, I thought it was frankly BS that he started. Uh, I, not only uh, Alcantara's better, uh, there's been a lot of pitchers that have been better than uh, Clayton Kershaw this year, if you ask me. And I get it. It was favoritism, Dodger Stadium, L.A., probably his last year there, if you were to guess, uh, yep. and, and all of that nonsense. Listen, it's simple. You start the best pitcher in the league. The best pitcher has been Sandy Alcantara. And by the way, uh, you got us uh, to start saying Alcantara the correct way after calling him Alcantara for like a yeah. year and a half. You got yeah. us completely spun around, Craig. Nice job. Um, listen, if I could contribute one thing to to uh, to Coast to Coast, there it is in the house. Hey, so when you watch the Yankees lose all these games to the Astros and close games, one or two run games, all of them, and then mm -hmm. all they got was the bookend homers from Judge for the uh, walk-offs. Mm -hmm. Otherwise... They would have lost like six in a row to him. And they hit 151 against him in the season series. The worst against any individual team they faced in their entire history. That is staggering to me. Well, I mean, it's the same thing that I've been saying since I've been coming on with you, Scott, all year long. It's the Astros are a better team than the Yankees. I mean, it's this is not difficult to see. The Yankees probably will have a better regular season record than Houston, but we will get to the postseason, and you cannot mash your way to the World Series in the postseason. And I believe the Astros pitching is just as good, if not better, than the Yankees. And their bullpen in Houston is great, too. And so why is this disparity, or now it's not quite what it was. The Astros, as you see, are 2-1 to one there, and the Yankees are plus 140. But these are two very evenly matched teams. Now, that being said, Scott, look, an ALCS, can it go down to seven games? Of course. And could the Yankees win? No doubt. But Houston's always been very aggressive at their trade deadlines. This is the same team that acquired Zach Greinke. This is the same team that acquired Justin Verlander. I believe both of those pitchers won Cy Young Awards. You cannot be shocked if, if Houston ends up going right back to the World Series yet again. So these results during the regular season don't surprise me head to head. So do you think, uh, A, that after they played two with the Yankees and then had to jump on a plane to Seattle to play the 14 in a row hot Mariners tonight yeah. that they'll lose tonight or do you think they'll beat the Mariners and do you like Verlander tomorrow either way against yeah, I Gilbert? Think that, yeah, I think you set it up perfectly. I think Houston's in a really tough spot tonight. I really do. I, and And again, taking those two games yesterday, you know that they're feeling good about that. And I and by the way, I think Houston could easily win two games this weekend in the series. But I mean, you got to look at Seattle tonight and think they're just going to keep this rolling at 15 games, and it could stop. And I and I think I think you've pretty much set the narrative up. I think for the weekend, but that's a tall order to ask a team to win both games of a doubleheader, go on the road, and then beat another team on the road too. So I know the odds are pretty much coin flip. I looked at it this morning, so I thought that would be a decent game to talk about tonight. But yeah, I, I do I do think that Seattle is a bona fide good team in Major League Baseball. I think they've played obviously above their head in this in this 14 game winning streak. What I like to look at are the teams that they beat, Scott. Everybody's long winning streaks this season in baseball have one thing in common. Washington is in those winning streaks. But not only Washington in this one, Oakland's in there too. So, uh, I believe the odds are more or less uh, well, I mean, not a pick them anymore. It looks like Seattle's up to minus 150, but that does make some sense to me. Boy, I hate laying minus 150. When I saw it earlier, I saw minus 125. So I got to tell you, and I know you probably don't like this, but uh, I have to say it before I forget. I, I showed it yesterday. I thought uh, Justin stole the red carpet, rolling his hot wife, Kate, out there. I mean, that was just a fantastic move. A lot of guys come out with ice, bling, nice suits, like our teen Perez got a lot of attention. No one had anywhere near the kind of juice that uh, Justin Verlander rolled out there with Kate on the red carpet. I almost fell over when I saw her walk out there with her little kids and everything. I'm like, my man, Justin's got it all figured out. I'm a huge fan of his, hers, all of them. I like the kid. I'll drive the kid to school if they want me to. Uh, here we go. I want to talk about the AL Central. 
I have this mm -hmm. weird feeling still about the White Sox that they can yeah. actually do some damage this weekend against Cleveland and get into a second half chase with Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still, I know the White Sox on paper are better than all those other teams in the division, but I, I still have my concerns there. And I know that the numbers are about even with them to win as opposed to uh, Minnesota to win the division. But Scott, you know, I, I think what, what I find fascinating about this time of the year in particular, we're on July 22nd. And on August the 2nd, there's going to be a massive shift in some of these odds. And the reason why is because of the trade deadline. And so either you have people like me who are coming on your show that have a feeling as to some things that are gonna happen or we're literally guessing. So I don't know what the right thing to do is right now. Like, is it to guess that the twins get a lot better at the trade deadline? Or is it to guess that the twins do nothing and just say, hey, we weren't supposed to be here anyway. Let's just roll with what we have. And I'm not really sure what the right answer is but I could tell you that these odds right now are going to look different for a lot of the teams at the top next week. That's for sure. Who do you like in the doubleheader tomorrow with Cueto and Lynn going, uh, Cueto game one, Lynn game two in Chicago? Well, I mean, I have to take deep a deeper look at what Lynn's other, you know, his location and how, I, I know he has not had a good year and he's not pitching well. So at this point, it's got really hard to back Lynn on the mound. I would just start with that. Yeah, I went against him in game two, but I did go with Cueto in game one. Cueto's ERA has been uh, real nice as far as I'm concerned. The results haven't been there because, right. as you know, Tony's team just doesn't produce day to day. They have one day good, Weird two team. days bad, one day good, three days bad. It's, it's unbelievable. It's the one team in baseball that's so talented that is like a jigsaw puzzle. You just can't figure out the pieces. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's why when you asked me about that division, I gave you the worst answer of, of our discussion thus far, because I just really don't know in the American League Central. And so I feel like with betting and, and giving opinions, if I don't know, I, I can't be afraid to just, just punt. <laughs> that's basically what I'm going to do with that division. I like the way the Twins are run. I like the executives that they have there. And, and Scott, they are super, super creative. Like that Correa deal, it's like a one-year deal maybe. They wait right. on Buxton. Everyone thinks they're going to lose him. And then at the 11th hour, they sign him to $100 million. I, I feel like they know what they're doing, the Twins. And, and, and by the way, I think they know probably more about what they're doing than the White Sox do. But on paper, on paper, I mean, who would have thought that the Twins would even sniff the White Sox this season? So that's kind of where it's at. All right, let's talk about the Cubs and Phillies this weekend at Citizens in Philadelphia. Uh, Steele and Gibson tonight to start the series off. Who do you like? Yeah, this, this is, uh, I, I think, personally, uh, over City. I see the total here is nine. Um, you know, Steele has been really prone to give up home runs, and Gibson is a pitch-to-contact pitcher. So, uh, look, Phillies are on a roll right now. They've won a bunch in a row. And so you have to feel good about their chances here. But, uh, you know, the total is something that I would be looking at here. It seems like it's it's on the lower side for two pitchers that like to pitch to contact. And again, you know, the other thing that people forget, Scott, is that these bad teams like the Cubs, like, you know, Kansas City, these other teams, they may not win games, but they have individual players on those teams that are playing to get themselves out of those situations. And, and all the teams have some. So just to, you know, blind bet unders at this point, thinking the team stinks, they don't care. Uh, you got guys that care on, on all of those teams too. After the deadline, Scott, that's when you just start pounding these unders and start pounding these favorites because then they know they're stuck. These players can't go anywhere. I'm going to be on this team the rest of the season. And that's why you see these massively long losing streaks in August and September. Did you see how many runs the Cubs put up against the Dodgers in that series in Los Angeles? They gave them fits. Yeah, so I, I again, two pitchers that don't strike out a lot of guys. I, I think Steele against the Yankees about a month ago, I think he gave up four home runs in one inning or something along those lines. A lot of runs going, coming in that one night. So, and then tomorrow, Wheeler's going to go for him against Stroman. So, uh, this is a big weekend for the Phillies. They got to get Harper back. All right, Scoop, great stuff. Uh, continued uh, enjoyment of the second half for you. Great job on Newswire Fantasy Sports today. Always good to see you on Coast to Coast, my man. Have a great weekend. All right, see you next week.
The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Well, boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. If you had to peer into your crystal ball right now, Jack, Who wins the AL Cy Young Award when it's all said and done? It's Shane McClanahan's to lose. I think that McClanahan is going to continue dominating. But if McClanahan falters at all, I think Dylan Cease might have been really ticked off by not being an all-star. It's just a question of command with Dylan Cease. And I think if the White Sox turn it on post-all-star break and do sneak into the postseason. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. And I think the key to everything is DeGrom. I'm not that worried about Scherzer. He's already come off the IL and pitched magnificently in two games. And I think he's on his way. Now, that's barring any further injury incidents for him. I'm worried about DeGrom. You know, he has, you know, he throws on Monday, Tuesday, shoulder tweaks. They, they don't have the simulated game. The Sports Grid Network. Not that anybody cares, but uh, I'll be out next week. And uh, as I said, I think yesterday, uh, Carver High's birthday is on Thursday. And uh, my birthday is on Friday. We always have the back-to-back birthdays every year. And I just wanted to say, Carver High's birthday is a celebration of beer and happiness. My birthday is a celebration of nothing based on how old I am now. As I continue to get older, uh, every birthday really sucks apples. I just absolutely am so sick and tired of getting older uh, that I can't say. So when that day comes around for you, Prime Minister, you are screwed. Enjoy getting old. It's a blast. Uh, so a happy birthday to Carver High. I hope everybody <laughs> celebrates. Uh, I always love working with the Prime Minister, Cam. And uh, I'll be back uh, a week from Monday, all right? So I'm going to the beach somewhere. I'm hoping not to get shot or be involved in any mass shootings. I just want to go chill at the beach and you know, look at yeah. girls in bikinis. Would that be all right without dying in America? It's Sounds such a amazing. Lovely place we live in. Granny's cool. <laughs> you're your woman. Like you're hanging out on a beach all week. It'll be wild with Carver High. I'll tell you, we're gonna have so many golf bets. We're gonna blow up uh, the station. And Scotty, yeah, you're right. You're turned fifty. What do you get for your birthday at fifty? Diabetes. It really sucked. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we're working on it right now. We're fighting through. Diabetes <laughs> on your birthday. Hey, thank you. What a lovely gift. Type 2 and, diabetes. Excellent. And gout. 
<laughs> All right. Jacob deGrom threw a simulated game, and he felt good. Uh, do you believe in uh, Scherzer and deGrom and their chances to win the World Series with both of them healthy? I actually think the Mets are going to be on a on a run. It's interesting. The Dodgers have those times, Scotty, where they have uh, problems scoring, and then they score in bunches, but they're lethal. They got a great pitching staff, too, but you got to like what the Mets are doing. They're still two and a half games up on the Braves. The Braves are always a problem. Uh, you know, they're always lingering and finding a way, but I, I do believe in the Mets. I know that people, Mets fans, are always talking curse this and whatever, and this team finds a way to fall apart. I doubt it this year. I, they're hitting the ball well. They got great pitching. They're a different team. So, yeah, I think the Mets can give the Dodgers all they can handle in the NL. So, baseball's attendance is way down, Cam, and uh, I, believe it or not, as you know, the only two games that I've gone to – uh, this year, we're at Rogers Center. I went to see the Jays and White Sox, and I, I sat right behind home plate. I had a great time. Uh, I love that ballpark, uh, even though it's really old now. When you really think about it, it's been around forever. I've been going to the. We're fixing uh, it up. I've been going there since it opened, and I always end up in Toronto, as you know. I love the city. And uh, have you gone to any games and why do you think people don't want to go to baseball games anymore? And don't tell me it's cause it's boring. We already know it's boring. I'm really surprised too, Scotty, but I'll tell you, I think it has to do with price on the weekend. And even when the Jays are in town, the place is packed. They love those Saturday, Sunday games during the week. People just don't seem to go. I'm not going to lie. It's expensive. Even for baseball. If some guy told me they have $5 Budweiser, I'd like to see this place in Skydome. Uh, I've never seen it. The beer's like 15 bucks. And the way you want to party there, you kind of like, you got to bring your wallet too. It's not that cheap. It's not like dollar dog days and dollar beers and going to a game at Kansas City. Toronto's pretty expensive. I know New York's expensive as well, but I think it has to do with price, inflation, and everything else. A lot of people are just staying at home and drinking at home and watching on TV. But on the weekend, it's different. And I'm going next week versus the Tigers because those tickets are damn cheap. Love when the Tigers and Royales with cheese roll into town. I could really go full out because the tickets are basically free. <laughs> I went, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so I went, I sat right behind home plate, 10 rows from the from the dish, awesome. and it was 200 bucks. That was it. If I do that at Yankee That's Stadium, it. it's $800. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. No, I see. Yeah, it's expensive, but those are good seats. You got the Getty Lee seats behind home plate there. He's always at the games. And I'll tell yeah. you, uh, it is a nice facility. Scotty, they're actually uh, talking to MLB 2027 All-Star Game. Massive renovations uh, to Sky Dome, so they got to fix up that place. It's a nice park, but they do have to fix it up. It's pretty old. Yeah, I actually, uh, I love going there. Uh, I just think it's a magnificent place. All right, uh, what do you think of this uh, guy, Trevor Bauer, suing this chick that he had all the rough sex with? Let's just not cut corners. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. What's the safe word? Things are different. I asked my buddy, he goes, I don't even know how to date anymore. I need safe words and stuff. I'm like, oh, God, thank God I'm in a relationship. I will stay. <laughs> <laughs> he told me he meets his woman. It's like, what's the deal? Like, you buying me up? What's the word? But anyway, uh, I shouldn't joke. But hey, I don't know if this if she's lying. I'll tell you, that's a big thing to say. I don't know. Rough sex is different than all this other stuff, Scotty. But you know, I'm gonna say this. I think Bauer would have been in big, bigger trouble by now if this was was a, a bigger situation, right? This guy's name's being dragged through the mud. He might not be a great guy, but I'm not sure the whole situation. I don't have an opinion on it, so. I don't want to get too crazy. All I know is, it's guys, if you're career. meeting a new woman, safe words. Yeah, his career's done. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know exactly what happened. Was it rough sex? Was it something worse? And if it was, this guy should never be playing baseball again. I got no time for that. But, you know, people are a little bit different these days. Uh, things are quirky. So, uh, Wander Franco had 650 grand worth of jewelry stolen from his car. Who the F leaves <laughs> almost a million dollars worth of jewelry in their car? I mean, I won't even leave my cell phone in the car. That's unbelievable. Like, yeah, what are you doing? It's like, you do you have like a bag of money that you leave and ask a grifter, please break into my car and take it? Why are you having jewelry in a car? Why don't you have it in a safety deposit box or in your house under lock and key? That's what safes are for, Scotty. That's what safes are for. Gold bricks, jewelry, important documents. Get a safe. Don't leave stuff in your car. Yeah, like I only leave a nine Glock in my car in America. <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> All right. That's amazing. <laughs> An MRI reveals uh, Jazz Chisholm uh, has a stress fracture in his back. 
he's going to be out uh, six weeks. But since he plays for uh, the Marlins, it just doesn't matter. I know you like betting on him, but they're out of it. Let's talk about today's games uh, and tonight's action so we can start betting on these games. Uh, you know, we'll start with the Cardinals and Reds. I uh, took the Reds in this game tonight, uh, Cam. And uh, let me just pull it up really quick so that I yep. can uh, tell you why. Uh, I took, believe it or not, uh, minor in the upset. Uh, no, let me get this straight. I, th- I'm looking at uh, Saturday. Uh, that's when I took minor, <laughs> or I took Mox over minor on Saturday. I took the Reds on, uh, or the Cardinals on Saturday. Today, I took uh, the Reds in this game, and this is the Friday game. I bet on Ashcraft over Wainwright. I like Ashcraft in the Queen City. I love Wainwright when he pitches at Bush, but not on the road. Good call, Scotty. I agree. I'll tell you a story. Next time we go on one of those Super Bowl trips, my buddy used to live with Adam Wainwright. I actually met him when he came to Toronto. They pitched for the Myrtle Beach Pelicans, one of my good buddies. Uh, So him and Wainwright are tight when he comes to Toronto, like I've been out and met the man. Very nice. But I agree with you. I will say this. Cincinnati's in a good spot as a dog tonight. I prefer Wainwright at home as well. Ashcraft isn't that bad. The Cincinnati Reds at home are a different team. You know what? It's a nice plus money price, Scotty. I'm with you. Let's Big Red Machine at plus money. Sign me up. Big total in that game, two of ten. Yeah, and then the Phillies uh, start the series up. I was talking about uh, the game with Scoop Mish. I'm on uh, the Phillies tonight and on Saturday uh, when uh, Wheeler goes. So I'm taking them in the first two games of this set. And I think uh, this is going to be an interesting game. The numbers at nine, both these guys give up about four runs a game. Are you going to go? Uh, Craig was on the over, and he said like that the, you know everybody's betting on unders left and right. He said, but. The Cubs are able to put up runs. And I mentioned how they put up all those runs in L.A. against the Dodgers. I think he might be right. I might go over here, but I'm more interested in uh, the Phillies getting it done with Gibson. Yeah, Steele, this guy's more like a wet paper bag most of the time. He gives up big bombs. He's no steal. Uh, I like Philadelphia. I love exactly what you're talking about. And I do agree agree with Scoop Mish on the over. I think Steele's going to get lit up. I've seen him get lit up for the Cubs. There should be runs in this baseball game. And, Scotty, the Phillies are a respectable price. I took the Pirates tonight. Uh, They're a dog at PNC. My problem is, uh, you know, I actually think this is going to be an under. And I think that uh, the Marlins just aren't scoring runs. They talked about how they're not hitting home runs. They haven't had a home run in July, basically. But the reality of it is, forget home runs. They're not scoring any runs. It's ridiculous. Alcantara... Lopez, all the great young pitching they have, and they blow these guys' games all the time. What, one run, zero runs? They can't even score against Texas. I'm with you, Scotty. Pittsburgh gave them fits the last time they played in Miami. Now we're getting these guys as a home dog. Yar, yar, the Jolly Roger. Sign me up with your Pittsburgh Pirates tonight, and I do agree they'll win like a 3-1, to 4-1 to one type of game under. I went big stones with the Orioles tonight at Camden to upset the Yankees. I think Wells has been great, a 3-3 ERA. I know shots of Tyone, our boy Jameson, uh, loves those shots. Uh, he's been great at 10-2. and two. But I say the Yankees get tripped up again like they did yesterday in Houston. I'm going to go with the dog in that fat price. Love it, man. We're reading each other's mail. I, I hate to say this. I'm more of a Mets guy for New York teams, and I'll tell you, I think the Yankees are a team, Scotty, in the second half. They're going to regress big time. They totally overachieved. The Orioles are a dangerous team. I worry about the break, but I like the price. I'm on Scherzer tonight with the Mets. He's on the bump at City and the Padres, laying a buck 88. I like it, though, and I'm definitely under Darvish against Scherzer. Should be a great one in Queens. Great game. I'm going to put the Mets in all sorts of parlays and round robins. Agree with you wholeheartedly. Mets get it done. All right. Uh, Toronto is taking on uh, the Red Sox in Boston. And uh, in this game, we've got uh, Gosman against Uvalde. I can't go against uh, Nate Uvalde at Fenway, but I am on the Jays tomorrow. I think Manoa's going tomorrow. I like him. Uh, Saturday in Boston, uh, but I'm going Boston tonight. I like the Jays at the short price tonight, but you know it's a little bit of a bias. I will say this, 
Gossman has been hurt, and that all-star break is going to help him get back into shape. I think that's big. Eovaldi has been good for the Red Sox, Scotty, but I'm going to go with the Blue Jays. Huge second half for them. I know the Red Sox are desperate too, but the Jays will get it done at the short price. I'm taking Otani tonight in Atlanta with the big upset over the fisherman, Charlie Morton. I like Otani because he strikes out 10, 12 guys a game. Uh, nobody does anything against him, a 2-3 ERA. I like the Angels and the under tonight. I think the Braves struggle against him. I agree. You're giving me Otani at a plus price. It has to. We got to pull the trigger. Give me the Angels. Cleveland and the White Sox, a huge series on the south side. Giolito against Quantrill. I took the White Sox in the opener. They're playing two on Saturday. I think Cleveland regresses big time in the second half. I agree with you. Give me the White Sox. They got to start getting better wins at home, Scotty, but they're the play tonight. Okay, uh, Colorado's taking on uh, the Brewers. Burns going tonight against uh, Sensatella. I think the Rockies are doomed. Love the Brewers. And he only allows two runs a game. Uh, I think the Brewers are going to score seven or eight runs themselves. I like the over in Burns and the Brew Crew. I like the Brew Crew even on the run line. I know it's at home. Wish it was at Coors to get that extra, extra outs. But, Scotty, that's parlayed with the Mets to plus money. Let's go. Give me the brew. All right, so we still got a few more games. Tampa, Kansas City, Texas, Oakland, Washington, Zona, Houston, Seattle, and San Fernando, the Dodgers. We'll get into those and take a, a peek at the Saturday games that I haven't mentioned already. I talked a lot about them with you, talked a lot about them with Scoop Mish. Uh, I'm looking ahead because I'm already trying to place a bunch of bets tonight before I hit the road tomorrow for the beach exactly. with my nine o'clock granny and a bag of reefer. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. We know Carlos Rodon is starting for San Francisco, and that line has actually worked in favor of the Gigantes, yet they're still booked as the underdog. They have the fourth highest under percentage in all of Major League Baseball this year. That number checks in at 57.3% of their games. The Giants have a rather high over percentage, but on the road, that number comes down to an even 50%. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The favorite is Paul Goldschmidt at plus 110. We know that war matters. Could these defensive superstars actually factor into this conversation because of how it boosts their overall wins above replacement? This year, aren't we doing that? Is anybody right now out there watching this show going, my goodness, now's the time to strike on Paul Goldschmidt? Absolutely not. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Eric Haas is behind the plate for Davis at 4,100. Aledvis Diaz is 3,700. We know he's in. Altuve at 6,000. Josh Smith at 3,400. You're just going to try to maximize points as much as possible. Or are you trying to get uh, a differentiated roster, find a couple low-owned guys? So I think starting with the Astros guys in dead uh, in uh, Aledvis Diaz and Jose Altuve. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. With this kid, he had a lot of years left on his deal. And, and give the Cardinals credit for doing this, Pharrell. They didn't have to do this. 
and the agent put pressure on him. And, and what, what's fascinating for all about the situation is the agent also represents the head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And here's the thing. Murray is now signed one more year past the head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And Kingsbury also recruited this quarterback to Texas Tech. It's kind of an amazing story. The Sports Grid Network. All right, so uh, we have two Kellers, Helen Keller with the Pirates, and then we got Keller with the Royals, and Keller with the Royals is so bad, he doesn't even get a nickname. So I'm on Rasmussen in the race tonight in Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The, those Royals have been playing better, too. It's unbelievable. They came up to Canada. Ten guys couldn't play because of COVID. They still, like, actually gave the Jays games. But I like Tampa Bay as a parlay piece, too. Rasmussen's pretty good. The Rays got to get on a little bit of a heater. So uh, I like a lot of runs tonight at the Ashtray in Oakland. I'm going to go with Irvin uh, with his three ERA over Howard, whose ERA is around seven. I like the over seven and a half, and I'm going with the stinky A's like my stinky feet at the Ashtray tonight. Yeah, I know, Scott. Swamp foot is a problem, but I'm going to take the Texas Rangers (laughs) in that game, and I like the over as well. But uh, Irvin is the A's best pitcher. All right, Nats and D-backs in the desert. I am rolling with my boy Zach Gallen with his 3-5 ERA. Corbin gives up six runs a game. I'm going D-backs. I'm going over the 8.5 tonight. I think the Diamondbacks are going to score 8.5 on their own against the lowly Nats. I like the Diamondbacks as well. No opinion on the total, but I'm with you on the Snakes. Houston and Seattle tonight. It starts. They're going for 15 in a row with Gonzalez against her quitty on the bump. I'm on Seattle making it 15. Me too, buddy. Give me the Mariners. Good. It's a good spot. All right. And then San Francisco and the Dodgers, believe it or not, I'm going uh, with San Francisco tonight uh, over LA at the ravine. I'm taking Webb high risk over 10 and one Anderson. What do you think of them apples? Yeah, we played blackjack with Webb's cousin, and we were in Vegas for the NFL draft. Give me the uh, San Francisco 49. Uh, what am I talking Oh, the Giants, the Giants. Give me the Giants tonight, Scotty. Yeah, I like uh, that you played uh, blackjack with him. That's awesome. Uh, and I, I got to tell you, these guys are both great. I love the under in the Giant Dodger game. Both guys are in the twos. I think it'll be awesome. We got two more hours. Grab a cold one on a Friday. 